there are many reasons why this is of potential interest. The first is that it's the first, it, it was approved in December of 2017. It's the first approved gene therapy treatment for an inherited disease of any kind. Not just ocular disease, but any, any ocular, any, any uh, inherited disease. Um, there were two other gene therapy products which were approved, but both of them were for cells that were removed from the body transformed, transfected with genes, and then placed back into the body. This gene therapy is true gene therapy in vivo. So we're talking about placing the viral genomes under the retina where they have access to the target tissue, which in this case is the retinal pigmented epithelium. And uh, we're looking at how the disease responds to replacement of a missing functional copy of the gene. In this case, the, the gene we're talking about is RPE65, which is the retinal transisomerase, which is the enzyme that recycles vitamin A in the visual pathway and allows people to be able to see. Um, so it's the, it's the visual pigment uh, used for detection. So uh, this is the three-year follow-up, and normally I am not a big fan of presenting follow-up data or, you know, three-year or five-year data because, frankly, things don't generally happen uh, that hadn't, haven't already happened at the one year or the primary endpoint of a trial. But in this particular, and, and that's true in this study too. So I'll, I'll, ruin, I'll ruin any suspense and just tell you in advance that the results are going to look very similar to the one-year follow-up. Uh, one, the the uh, one-year um, primary endpoint data that we presented to the FDA, um, and but but the question, the reason why I elected to come and give this talk, because normally I don't like to give three-year follow-up, five-year follow-up kind of trial information, is that there was before we started our trial, there were three other trials looking at gene therapy for this particular gene, RPE65. One of those groups published a paper which claimed that by year three, the durability of the treatment had completely worn off. And so there, were, there have been ongoing concerns from payers, ongoing uh, concerns by <coughs> treating physicians, inherited retinal disease specialists, about whether this kind of therapy, a gene intervention trial where you replace the gene, whether the gene's gonna remain active because this is essentially uh, a potentially one and done kind of treatment. Um, it's a potentially once, once per eye kind of treatment and the question is whether it is going to last 